All right, everybody, without further ado, we are uh, about an hour late, but we're on, and we have a lot to talk about. I'll be joined here in a few moments by meteorologist Rich Lupia. In fact, I think he's joining us right now in the program because I see him, and we're going to pop up his mic here in just a couple of moments. Uh, Rich, great to have you on the program. I will unmute you as soon as I can. Okay, I'm going to ask you to unmute, and you can join this conversation right away. Thank you for being on tonight. Special segment of Weather Live. Rich, I think you have to do the unmuting, my friend. So uh, we'll bring up uh, Rich here in a couple of moments. want to, again, thank you guys for being on tonight. Uh, as we do our best here to uh, get you guys all squared away. Severe weather ongoing, and we've had uh, several, several uh, tornadoes, possibly. I know some of them have been confirmed. Moving through the state of Nebraska, now Iowa. Iowa under the gun for severe weather. Quick look at early check of your update. I've got Rich Loopy at top left. Rich, if you can hear me, you have to un unmute your mic. I can't do it for you. No, you have to do it. Mute my audio. Nope. That's you, buddy. You're going to have to go through your audio control. All right, there we go. Ooh, yes, everybody yes, give, we got it. Give Rich Hi. a hand. Give Rich a hand. Now, Rich, I've got, you. I've got two of you. So I'm okay. gonna, I want to figure out, uh, not that you know, we, we want to get rid of you to any degree we do need to have just one of you yes but that's just you know that's neither here nor there all right with that being said it is uh okay there we go i'm trying to cover up your other self there's definitely two rich lupias around all okay. right here we go we got rich in the house i'm going to check with our audiences here in a few minutes but i feel like we have some catching up to do so let's go ahead and do that uh, many of you guys know that uh uh the storm prediction center issued a rather broad area uh, underneath a severe risk. You're looking at the risk area from the Storm Prediction Center. That's a rather large moderate risk, and it doesn't come, uh, you know, it's worth noting just five days ago we had another moderate risk that turned out to be an extensive tornado outbreak across portions of the Middle Mississippi River Valley, and of course mm -hmm. Kentucky so hard hit Friday night. It's the middle of December. You don't expect this stuff, but they do. That's the tornado risk you're looking at, 10% across much of central, northern Iowa and the southern portions of Minnesota. This is the damaging wind threat, destructive winds, 75, 80 mile per hour winds with these storms. And some could gust even higher than that. They're estimating maybe a few areas could receive 100 mile per hour winds. Simply phenomenal stuff here. So, Rich, I want your early take. Obviously, we have a lot going on. We do have active uh, severe or tornado warnings. The most impressive one that I'm looking at right now is probably this warning that's in effect across uh, west central Iowa. This is for northern Cass, southwestern Guthrie. Yes. Audubon counties and Adair counties. And uh, let me mention there's one more to the north that looks like it's pretty active as well. Yeah, up towards Manila there. That one that one looks like a pretty good couplet as well. That one actually looks a little bit more impressive than the one down towards Brayton. It's interesting that they haven't extended that warning yet, and we have more warnings the further north that you go. We're going to cover all of this, but again, if you're joining mm -hmm. us from Western Iowa, thank you for being here. We appreciate your trust and confidence. Um, and if you're in those warned areas, uh, we do encourage you to, to go ahead and take all your necessary precautions. So, Rich, go ahead. Give me. You've been watching this with me. Give me your mm -hmm. take while I finish getting us uh, uh, set up on the rest of our social medias. Right now, we are streaming live to YouTube, to Facebook and to rumble and uh, okay. so uh we're getting the word out so go ahead and give me your your, your quick assessment 
Okay, so uh, this line that is the cold front, the leading edge of much, much colder air on the backside of a very intense low pressure system that is trailing across Nebraska into western Iowa at this time, moving very quickly to the northeast. Uh, this is the main focus that is causing a line of severe and tornadic thunderstorms from the southeast corner of South Dakota, just south of Sioux Falls, down through western Iowa, now getting very close to the metro Kansas City area and curling back to about Wichita, Kansas. So we have a lot of real estate right now in Nebraska and Kansas that has just experienced severe weather, some confirmed tornadoes, winds confirmed anywhere from 600 to 107 miles per hour confirmed winds earlier today uh and now Where do you that get weather that 107 is, mile per hour wind from what is that from what source that that, that came that came from um uh, that came from actually the peterson farm brothers in uh in kansas in um in uh, salina kansas they uh they said that winds that there was a confirmed wind gust of 107 i'm not they, sure if they that was measure, they City. measure that um, well, yes, they do have weather equipment, so I don't know if it was measured on their farm or if it was just somewhere else in Kansas. Okay. I'm assuming it's somewhere else in Kansas, more than likely western Kansas, because that's where I saw a lot of the 75 to 100 mile per hour wind gusts earlier this day. Okay, I got you. I'm tracking you. Uh, all right, very good. Well, we are up, in fact, on all three uh, sources, as we said that uh, we were and that we were hoping to be. Let's take a, a broader view of things here as uh, we switch on okay. over to our other radar source. And uh, this is uh, kind of give you a, a bigger perspective. And again, this is just a nasty, nasty uh, line uh, of storms here where we are showing you uh, both the SPC severe risk and also we've got radar overlaid in this. I'm showing you wind probabilities. Let's go back over to actual the uh, the categorical risk, which is uh, moderate risk in the red there, that does include many areas downstream. So these are these are the areas, and it may not be right on top of you right now. So what we want to do is kind of heads up because this thing is going to pick up steam, guys. It's going to be in Fort Dodge in no time. This thing is going to move so quickly. Storm Lake, well, that's an appropriate name on a night like tonight. Storm Lake, <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, Des Moines, you're on the kind of the south end of this uh, moderate, but you were included in this moderate. This thing's going to get to you. In no time, these storms are moving at approximately 70 miles per hour. So uh, they are just absolutely barreling through the Midwest. Mason City, we want to put you on alert. Iowa Falls, uh, Waterloo, Iowa, Rochester, Iowa, Wabash. Rochester, Minnesota, Albert yep. Lee, Rochester, Minnesota, Rochester, Minnesota, Austin, Thank Minnesota. You. Thank you. And, and all the way to as far as... Yeah, La Crosse, Wisconsin, uh, Cedar Rapids, uh, Iowa mm -hmm. City, Dubuque, uh, the Quad Cities. Those are areas that are going to be impacted. And those areas that I just mentioned will probably be in a couple of hours, probably closer to 8, 9, 10 o'clock tonight, Central Time. Yep. It's 512 right now, Central Time. So you've probably still got a few hours. But with these things clicking along at 70, 75 miles an hour on an the average, for everybody. you know, I uh, mean... Yeah, I mean, the, the, these are flying. There were some individual cells, Jeremy, a little bit earlier today that Weather Service had clocked as high as 100 miles per hour. Individual cells moving at 100? In, in, individual cells in eastern Nebraska were moving as fast as 100 miles per hour earlier today. That was shared by uh, meteorologist Chris yeah, Colley down in Wilmington. That's simply incredible stuff. You know, we had some yeah. cells moving 80, maybe 90 miles an hour on, on Friday night tracking into mm -hmm. central and eastern kentucky this is a this is a, a a notch higher than that and that's what this has this system has doesn't have quite the instability of the setup from friday night into saturday morning but what it makes up in is is, is the amount of powerful shear uh, the wind energy associated with this about as strong as any storm you're going to see any time mm -hmm. of the year so wind energy is its fort not forte by the way look it up fort um and obviously, look at it, just how dynamic this is, because on the front end, you got this severe line of thunderstorms capable of tornadoes and destructive straight line winds. But boy, just a short distance to the west, man, you can see on the back side where it's tapping in that colder air, you're already getting the snow. So Yeah. Yeah, and there were snow squall warnings uh, earlier uh, today back out towards North Platte, Nebraska, and back towards uh, central and western Nebraska, and areas that I was on warning for the tornadoes a little bit earlier around Grand Island and mm -hmm. Hastings, Nebraska. They're about to flip over to snow. They were 72 to 74 degrees literally just three hours ago. Wow. 
Yeah, that's just incredible. All right, well, now that I've got, we've got all of our feeds up and running, I do want to share them over with um, both Twitter and also on Getter. Did you get on Getter yet, by the way? Uh, yes, I'm on Getter. I I did put out a post. Uh, is anyone out there? I don't think anyone's uh, responded back hey yet, but I am on Getter. Good. And uh, for those that aren't on Getter, there's no reason not to get on there. It's free. Okay, it, it operates almost just like Twitter, if not better. It's got more functions. Um, and it's a, it's a free speech platform, which we want that. You want that for weather, but you want that for all of your sources of information. So uh, I think you just do it. So get on Getter. I'm getting the word out on Getter and on Twitter right now that, uh, again, severe weather is ongoing. I'm loading information coming in out of Des Moines. So what I'm doing right now is I'm... Um, changing my my radar source but look at all those tornado warnings jeez rich yeah. speak to, yeah speak to that just a little bit okay yeah as far south as saint joseph's missouri and that storm that just came crashing through topeka and around carbondale and uh, centropolis Sh um, shout out to my old my old stomping ground by the way we'll, we'll take right a look right at right of coming up Right, of course, um, is now moving down the Kansas Turnpike very quickly at about the speed that you would travel down the Kansas Turnpike, about 70 miles an hour, uh, screaming east towards Kansas City. Um, it will be in the Red Kingdom very shortly, like literally within the hour. I would expect uh, severe, severe thunderstorm warnings at the very least to be issued for Metro Kansas City uh, before the hour is up, and those storms will probably crash through just after 6 o'clock Central Time. Okay, very good. I'm going to change. Uh, so which source do we have up right now? I'm going to change over to our uh, Des Moines uh, radar source. This is level two data from our okay. Gibson Ridge uh, level two analyst radar. And take a look because uh, we've got some we've got some pretty impressive wind signatures already. And this thing is still ramping up. It's mm -hmm. still on the way up. All right, let's get the latest warning information. It's so many warnings, it's hard to keep up. And there were tornado warning almost every one of them. And, and it's obvious why. Because there is so much wind energy above you that A, a tornado can drop out of the eye in a moment. In a moment. But Ooh. B, even if you don't see actual straight line or uh, tornado winds, tornadic winds, the straight line winds are going to do the same type of damage. They're that strong. Uh, they're going to be as strong as uh, you know EF1 uh, tornado, maybe higher. Maybe low end EF2 with straight line winds. But with that being said, I do see some couplets that are developing, and I want to cover those right now. Tornado warning for Greene County in west central Iowa, northwestern Guthrie, northern Audubon, southern Calhoun, eastern Carroll County in west central Iowa. That's a tornado warning goes until 6 p.m. central time. I do know notice that we have uh, eastern time uh, on the actual uh, slide over on the right-hand corner whatever you call that thing that i have my information on that's eastern understand that most of our audience if you're affected by these warnings you're central okay so you're just one hour behind but look at the couplets here look at those little couplets those are probably little tornadoes they're not huge but when they're whipping around in winds that are already 70 80 miles an hour that's problematic yes. that is that is problematic and, and i'm going to go through some of my um tools with you so we're looking at uh reflectivity on the right we're looking at srv or storm relative velocity on the right i should say it's reflectivity on the left let me uh, get new storm motion there we go and you can see where well, you got the red and the green coming together there these are all couplets and every one of these are the potential of tornadoes now i'm going to quickly look i i it's we'll look at um correlation coefficient to they're on the ground they're on the ground unbelievable so we got multiple trails on the ground within the same warning yes it looks um, like yeah, uh, i'm looking at that just just to the south and southwest of coon rapids that's geez. where i'm seeing a lot of the stuff starting to pop up okay so this is called a tds or a tornadic debris signature and i'm wondering if i mean well we just i, I can't wait to see images we're going to see images and, and uh, we're going to go over to our social media here coming up but this is not a pretty signature that I'm seeing here at all. So you're looking no, at... No, this isn't good. So you are literally looking at... And let me pull up my whiteboard here to describe what we are, we are seeing. 
Yeah, that's what I was. That's what I was seeing on my radar scope, just south of uh, Coon Rapids there in that blue area, right where that uh, triangle is, indicating the tornado vortex signature. Yeah. Um, that is more than likely a radar confirmed tornado. Uh, as that, a matter of fact, that's, that's I will, what um, I'm looking at. And uh, yeah, anyway, I'm, I'm going to switch over to Des Moines and uh, and and see if they've got the uh, and see if they've got the confirmation on that. Okay, so on the whiteboard, what I'll do is I'll identify those couplets. So you got a couplet right here. Oh, they just issued a massive tornado warning. You got another couplet right here, and these coincide with these areas of uh, of what I would consider a TDS. Actually, it doesn't. That one is offset. There may yeah, be, there yeah, may be a timing there. issue here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go back over to my radar tool, and let's get the new warning out. Oh, they issued two of them, and they're huge. Okay, let's see what the wording is. Are they going to go with confirmed? Okay, um, let's see. Uh, tornado warning has issued tornado warning for, this is Green, Guthrie, Boone, Dallas, Adair. It says uh, tornado warning uh, is based on radar radar confirmed so they are they're picking up the exact same thing that you and i are talking about which yep. is the tds or the tornadic debris signature so we got debris in the air the radar is 10 miles northeast of atlantic moving northeast 75 miles per hour mm -hmm. weather spotters confirmed tornado crossing interstate 80 north of atlantic yep tornado is on the ground take cover now uh, Crawford, Iowa, the uh, radar confirmed that. Uh, no, that's a little bit. That's a little bit earlier. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, so those cells that we're looking at right now around uh, around Croft. Um, hold on, just a second here. Uh, let me go back. Um, yeah, uh, just to the south of Coon Rapids, Iowa, uh, Bayard, um, Dedham, That that whole couplet that we're looking at right now. That is what is, the Weather Service has confirmed on radar. That's what spotters have confirmed, and this is what um, this is the biggest out of everything on the line from South Dakota all the way down through Southern Kansas. This is the most intense part of the line right now. All right. Well, we need to cover this because this this we may be entering maximum intensity based on what I know about the instability of the atmosphere right now. If you okay. don't mind going over, and I'm going to go over to our other radar source, Rich. Yes. You don't mind going over all of the warnings that you have in front of me right now, uh, because uh, this is starting to pan out. You know, you, I, I love bust when it comes to severe weather. I love it. It means that you <laughs> talked about it for days. Nothing really came of yep. it. Well, last Friday night certainly was not a bust. This does not nope. appear to be a bust either. So let's talk about it. Let's get all the warnings out. Guys, we have to be on our toes. Let's do this. Okay. All right. So uh, I am going to go through. Uh, I'm going to zoom out here. We have 28 uh, severe thunderstorm and tornado warnings right now grief. Uh, that are, uh, let's see here. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 tornado warnings, 17 severe thunderstorm warnings. Nearly all of the tornado warnings are in the state of Iowa with the exception of the two in Missouri, um, which uh, the rotation on them is radar indicated. They are radar indicated. Okay, so um, that's radar indicated. That is also radar indicated. Sac County uh, is indicated. Carroll and Crawford County, that is also indicated. Uh, uh, okay, Audubon, Callahan, Green County, that is, okay, Adair, Dallas, Green. This is the radar confirmed one. So this one, 37 minutes. Okay, hold on just a second here. Yep, yep. yeah, it's no problem at all. So, I'm, Rapids, okay, I just, Rapids, got our, uh, I just got our Facebook feed uh, from uh, Weather Live Media shared over to my main page. So we're going to watch uh, Population okay. Should Grow there. All right. Um, and I'm also getting the word out right now to our friends. Uh, over in the Twitter, Twitter sphere that uh, this is all in progress right now. Okay. And I am going to get on my social media. I'm going to share the YouTube uh, feed over to my personal Facebook and to my Facebook feeds right now. All right. Very good. All right. Uh, so we are looking at an extraordinary severe weather event in progress. Moderate risk was issued this morning by the Storm Prediction Center out of Norman, Oklahoma. And it appears that it is absolutely verifying. Unfortunately, uh, we are seeing this again. It's, it's, you know, I don't like to, 
I don't want to compare to what we saw Friday night because that was a different animal. This is, these are two different types of storms, but this one could be just as severe. And in fact, considering the, the potential of such widespread destructive straight line winds, in addition to the tornado threat, uh, when it comes to the possibility of destruction, this is right up there. It's right up there. So as, as Rich was telling you, we've got these warnings that are just lit up. They're all over the place. We are concentrating on Des Moines. Des Moines, you're under a severe thunderstorm warning, but but you have active tornado warnings ongoing just to your west. Terrific amount of wind energy uh, associated with the storm. Yes. Uh, and it's those northern and western suburbs mm -hmm. of Des Moines where um, where I would be particularly concerned. I'd be concerned heading up 35 up towards Ames mm -hmm. and then eventually towards Mason City. I would be, you know, especially uh, along and north of Interstate 80. That seems to be where the tornado warnings are really consolidating right now. You get farther south, you get down towards KC, and uh, they've just issued the warning for Kansas City and points north and west. Um, that's all severe down in uh, that respect. And there's still going to be some damage. There's still going to be some very strong straight line winds. You have to take this very seriously. But closer to the low pressure center where there's a little bit more change of direction with height, you've got more of that bulk shear, that zero to three kilometer shear. That is where the tornado warnings and where the potential for moderate risk and long track tornadoes are coming from right now. And uh, I'm going to zoom back into uh, towards Coon Rapids to the northwest of Des Moines and uh, check out this storm right now. All right, let's see what we've got going on again. Uh, so right now you're looking at uh, our primary radar source. I'm going to take you back over to our level two uh, mm -hmm. radar source and uh, take a look at what's happening on the ground level right now. Again, uh, We've got uh, another event in progress. It's unbelievable that it's mid-December and we're dealing with this again, but here we go. It's uh, These patterns tend to repeat themselves. I'm seeing more and more uh, evidence of TDSs appearing on my screen right now, so I want to investigate what's happening. Uh, and there's a lot of velocity couplets here, so we've got a lot of information to, uh, to sort through. Again, it's very difficult for us to keep up with the individual warnings. They're happening so fast, but here we go. Strong couplets now beginning to appear on my radar. I'm looking at gate-to-gate -gate shear. Get this, Rich. I've got 60 mile an hour going uh, toward our, uh, I gotta do my math now, where the radar is. Toward the, toward, or towards the radar, 60 miles per hour. On the opposite side, we have 45 miles per hour. That's 105 mile per hour. Gate to gate shear. Gate to gate shear. And this is not at that high of a level either. It's about 5,000 feet. To right, the north, right. we've got, and it's a little higher in elevation, 65 one way. You come across the aisle and we're looking at about 30, 40 miles per hour the other way. So okay. 90 mile per hour gate to gate shear. This is serious. And you can see in the debris that's being lofted here, this appears to be all related to these couplets. So debris is yes. getting lofted. It's interacting with the upper level winds. Something happened to me uh, Friday night and Saturday morning out of Lexington. Uh, so, uh, yeah, a lot of you guys know that I've been working uh, freelance style for the uh, ABC affiliate out of Lexington, Kentucky. So I pulled an 18 hour shift on Friday and Saturday and all the tornadoes. I think, you know, worst case scenario, obviously for Western Kentucky, what we saw, uh, but something that very interesting that, that I noted after all that destruction and I left at like uh, 7.30 in the morning, Saturday morning. And I noticed how dirty my car was. I went and got a car washed, and I came back to the station the next day or two days later, noticed that a couple of the cars that had been parked out in the parking lot were also just filthy dirty, filthy dirty. And then it dawned on me what, what occurred. All that destruction out west, all those tornadoes out west, lofted so much debris and junk into the atmosphere that it settled back down with the rain on the back end of that storm. That goes, and that's what we're seeing here with CC, correlation that's, coefficient. That's the debris yeah, that, yeah, lost in the air. And that's just abs that's just absolutely amazing. That's just absolutely amazing. Yeah. Um, and you're talking and about I'm, hundreds of miles away. Well, we had some touchdowns that were much closer. Mm -hmm. Much closer. Don't my friends know when I'm on? Don't don't think. <laughs> you know hey, I mean? how you doing? Yeah, yeah, we're covering tornadoes right now. We'll be get back to you as soon as possible. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> which will be which will be about midnight tonight. <laughs> so uh, anyway, with that being said, uh, let's go over the latest warnings for everybody. Rich, do you have that in front? And they you do yes. have a you do have a TDS signature that's being shown up on the radar right now. Let me get that one warning because this is the one I'm most concerned about. This is for Green, 
uh, Guthrie, Audubon, uh, Calhoun, Carroll counties. This goes until 6 p.m. Central or 7 p.m. Eastern for those that are watching this uh, remotely. If you're yeah. in Eastern, if you got family in Eastern Central Iowa, you got family in Southern Minnesota, you need to be sharing. You got to share these feeds, okay? Mm-hmm. You just never know when one's going to save a life. And I'll, and I'll say this just anecdotally before we go over to the warnings. I've got family in Muhlenberg County, Kentucky. You know that storm that hit Brennan in Central City? I called my mom 10 minutes before it hit, and I had her contact our relatives. And uh, more than one of them were hit by the storm. And uh, my cousin, who is a, is a county clerk in uh, Central City, the, the judge she works for was killed in that tornado. All right, what are, the, what are the warnings, Rich? Okay, Adair, Boone, Dallas, Green, and Guthrie counties uh, in Iowa. This is radar confirmed, and that's uh, some of the debris signature that we are tracking there uh, just to the north of Coon Rapids, Iowa. Um, and then uh, this one is uh, radar indicated for Audubon, Calhoun, Carroll, Green, and Guthrie counties. This is more towards the south. Um Let's see. This is uh, radar indicated Calhoun, Carroll, and Sac counties, uh, Buena Vista, Cherokee, and Clay counties. Uh, radar indicated, and Clay County is also uh, radar indicated. So basically, we're looking from just north of Storm Lake, from around Spencer, down through Storm Lake, approaching Lawrence right now, near Pocahontas, Mason. Uh, Rockwell City, Lake City uh, starting mm. to get in on the action. Down yep. through Coon Rapids and Jefferson, this is the area with the biggest concern and where we have the radar confirmed tornado oh uh, around and just to Look. the north and east of Coon Rapids R- and back Rich. towards Jefferson Center and Perry. That's unbelievable, man. Look at this uh, new couplet that's developing. There's a, there's a pair of them. Oh, okay. Yep, that's not good. That's not good. So uh, in the orange there, that wind is moving at approximately 70, 70 to 80 miles per hour. Just on the right. other side, you've got wind that's moving now uh, um, away from the radar site at about 45. So even though it's not gate to gate, we're getting up 115 mile per hour shear. And this yes. one here has yes. got a TDS on it as well. Let's go mm-hmm. ahead and take a look at uh, correlation coefficient. Sure enough, massive TDS. Okay, I, I want to look at some images. Uh, if you're live on Facebook, if you're live on YouTube or Rumble, thank you. And please share. Let people know that we're on Right now, you never know when this information could actually save a life. Uh, this is, uh, again, the area that the Storm Prediction Center had put under. Uh, the risk, again, I think it's another very well-placed uh, convective outlook. Uh, moderate risk. You typically only get a handful of these a year. We've had two in five days, and it's December. Unbelievable. Now that it's getting dark, well, it is dark, uh, now we have the issue, the threat of not only are these things coming at you screaming fast, but they're at night, possibly and rain wrapped and rain wrapped. Almost all of these tornadoes you're not are gonna, rain wrapped. You're not going to see not them. Hear them. You're not, not going to see, see them. So the best you can do, and again, those two couplets are really showing up on radar. So I want to go back over to that. Again, uh, there we go. Okay. Look at those two twin couplets. There's a third one now. These things are yeah. they're spinning like tops. So I mean, you're getting ferocious winds if you don't get a tornado. And, and, and then these are legitimate tornadoes that are spinning up on top of these incredible winds. I'm going to put this into motion. You can just watch it. That's a velocity on the right, and it's a reflectivity I, on the left. Iowa Falls, Mason City, Fort Dodge, Dows, Gardner, Forest City, Clarion. Uh, these storms are a half hour to 45 minutes away from you, if not sooner, especially Fort Dodge. That could literally be a matter of just a few minutes at the rate these are moving. These are the areas in which this radar uh, confirmed tornado in which these debris signatures, these correlation uh, you know, coefficients that uh, Jeremy's been showing you on the radar, it's moving to the north and east. This is the most intense part of the storm. This is where you need to take your tornado precautions. If you're put under tornado warning, lowest level of the home, uh, if you can get underground, that would definitely be better. But if you can't, interior, away from windows, into the bathroom, into a closet, get a mattress or some kind of thick blanket over you to cover you. You saw what happened in Kentucky uh, five days ago and across the, you know, the Mid-South. And even though 
this is way far north and even though there's even some snow and traces of snow still on the ground getting up into central and northern iowa where this um where the storm is going through they just had snow with the last storm five days ago and now the warmth is blowing in the snow is melting and now you got a tornado going through you got to take it seriously just like you would if it was in mid-june seek shelter if you're under a warning take your tornado precautions seriously yeah, absolutely. And I'm working on getting a chat link up with uh, Davenport, Iowa. Um, that way we can kind of get a, uh, not Davenport, uh, Des Moines, Iowa. So that way we can get a direct feed of over what's happening there. So okay. I should have that up here in a couple of moments. But it's amazing to look at the speed of this thing. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I mean, this thing was just in Omaha, like, you know, like an hour ago, and it's almost to Des Moines. I'm, yeah. I mean, th this is literally moving at highway speed. <laughs> I, I mean, mm -hmm. 60, 70, 80 miles an hour, you're literally moving at highway speed. And this now, is this is Rich yeah. Lupia highway speed. Okay, so that is, a, that is 80, <laughs> 90 miles an hour. I'm just saying. He's pounding down. All right. Yep. Anyway, yep. Um, <clears throat> so I want to join. Uh, so I want you to take a look. Um, at some straight line winds <clears throat> on the coefficient that is south of the tornado warning area that's in the severe thunderstorm warning uh, area. Okay. I want you to look a little bit closer to the radar center. So west of Polk City, west of Johnston, west of Des Moines. So I'm talking Perry, Minburn, Dallas Center, Adele, Redfield, Van Meter. I think Erlen. we see a developing tornado n north of Arbor. North, yes. Nor north of Arbor Hill. Okay. That's a fairly strong couplet that's developing there all right but uh i'm looking but i'm looking at the bow line i'm looking at the line that's starting to bow out uh that's just moving through linden right now which looks like it's going to take aim to the northern suburbs of des moines here in the next uh, 30 to 40 minutes or so if not less um and close to where the doppler radar site is for des moines mm -hmm. uh the radar site got taken out temporarily in omaha maybe des moines next i mean it seems to be the way with these uh crazy strong winds uh, i mean when you have non-thunderstorm winds 50 60 70 plus miles per hour and then you throw storms on top of it you know it, it, it's amazing that uh, infrastructure stays up in this yeah, here's some pictures from just a little while earlier. I'm going to take you out to, uh, this is Lincoln, Nebraska. Let's see what this looks like. Okay. That is uh, a With look at the cloud. Uh, crazy strong uh, winds. Uh, I mean, when you have non-thunderstorm winds. Let me get that fixed. Let me get the echo fixed, and I'll take you back over to the, to the images. So okay. let's go back over to radar. Rich, get you back on the, over to the correct side of the screen. There we go. All right. And uh, carry on, sir. All right, uh, so uh, let's see here. My radar scope disappeared. So I'm, I'm showing the other uh, radar yeah. unit right now. This is our primary radar, and yep. uh, it's got all the uh, storm prediction center, the convective outlook. It's got uh, pre yep. precip type along with the Taking reflectivity. Taking a look at that right now. Yeah, it's snow into Grand Island, which just had, uh, you know, you know, which less than four hours ago was 70 something degrees with the potential torn, you know, potential tornadoes running through Grand Island and Hastings. And you are now changing over to snow and nearly 40 degrees colder. Um, you know, that's just amazing. But the Storm Prediction Center, I want to give hats off to them. Their moderate risk area is dead on where the tornado warnings are and where the couplets are right now. Um, you know, is lining up directly um, uh, where the looking at Skyview now uh, towards Not the even west. Not in the enhanced, but right in the moderate risk. Hats off to, to mm -hmm. Storm Prediction Center for that. You don't, you know, you don't want to see this verify, but, you know, at least in this situation where this is affecting hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people, the forecast is accurate. The mm -hmm. warnings are legit. Please take them seriously. If you have any friends, any family, Des Moines, up 35, all the way up uh, past Albert Lee, all the way up to Minneapolis, St. Paul, down 35, all the way to KC, and even farther south, uh, even getting towards Springfield, Missouri, these storms mean business. And even though there may not be a tornado risk in some parts of these areas, the straight line winds of 60 to 80 plus miles per hour will do damage. Mm -hmm. They will down mm -hmm. bring down tree limbs and power lines. Please take these seriously and um, take your tornado precautions north and west of Des Moines, where we uh, are looking at Linder Litterdale and Lanesboro. 
Um, we are looking at uh, a TBS there right now, and I'm pulling up the uh, velocities here, and it's showing it uh, actually up towards Lorville. Wow, man, this is how fast this storm is moving. I mean, they, they put the marker down like five to ten minutes ago, and it's already moved well past. So I want you to look, uh, Jeremy, around Lorville and okay. just to the south and east of Rockwell City ar around Renard and uh, just south of Manson, Iowa, uh, where that couplet is. That is a fairly strong couplet there, and I'm going to put up the correlation coefficient, and there is some stuff around the Lorville describe, area. Uh, Not describe that location for me again. Okay, Lorville, so you're looking about, okay, so where Lake City is, you're mm -hmm. going to go just to the east of Lake City, Iowa. Okay, and I'm going to pull up the other radar unit. Um, All right. So this is uh, WSV3. For those that are interested in what you're looking at now, I'm going to go back over to GR Level 2 Analyst. This is uh, the highest resolution uh, Level 2 data that you're going to find anywhere. And uh, let's investigate. So you said Lake City. Where is that yep. in relationship to Des Moines? Okay, so northwest of Des Moines, mm -hmm. it's um, almost midway between Des Moines and Sioux City. Okay, uh, so midway between Des Moines and Sioux City. And let me pan out and get my bearings. A uh, lot of town names on here. Uh, I'm just going to go right into what I think my eyes are telling me are, is, is the most concerned couplets, and that's this one here, uh, approaching Grand Junction. Uh, is that in relationship? And then there's the one that's just north of it as well. Okay, Grand Junction. I'm not, I'm not City. okay. Okay, so go just to the north and west of there. That's where Lake City is. Just to the north and west of Grand Junction. Yeah, that couplet there. So that's I the one you're looking that. at. Okay, and let's yeah, go yeah, ahead that, and go back yeah, over the correlation I'm coefficient. I'm going to go ahead and put uh, uh, velocity on the left now. So velocity okay. will be on the left, and then we'll go over to. Uh, you know, let's see if it does if it obeys. Oh, yeah, we just got an updated image too. It doesn't look good. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and put no, correlation coefficient over here on the right, so middle of that couplet here, place marker, and it's close. It's hard to tell if this is um, all debris aloft uh, or if there's some hail contamination. It could be I mean, with the strength of these winds that we're seeing. Once debris gets lofted, man, it can just go flying. It can go flying and being picked up by the radar. So oh, yeah, that absolutely. may be what we're seeing here. I'd be interested to see what the weather service is saying. Uh, and, and especially, yeah, so they just issued the new warning. Let's go through the new warning information with our friends that are on here right now. And this is what the weather service is saying. I'll put this in the motion for you while I do this. Tornado warning in effect for northeastern Greene County, Webster County, southeastern Calhoun, northwestern Boone. Southwestern Hamilton County in Central Iowa. That goes until 6.15 Central Time. It is a tornado-producing storm, they're saying. And it is radar confirmed, so they are they're using the TDS to confirm this, a tornadic debris signature. So according to radar, they know what's on the ground. Mm -hmm. They know what's on the ground. Uh, I would like to see uh, some more pictures, and I'm going to go back over to some more pictures uh, in a few moments. Uh, again, we were getting some images coming out of eastern Nebraska just here a few moments ago. And we'll be able to pull some of that back in in real time as well. Getting, uh, okay, so I'm going to go through it's my It's a feed. radar confirmed tornado and it's moving northeast at 80 miles per hour. 80 okay. miles an hour. And I don't want to ignore our, our, you know, our viewers. I want to thank you guys for being on for both Facebook Live, YouTube Live, Rumble Live. Um, and I, let me go ahead and address a few of our friends that are on right now. I've got Kayla on here. Crest in Iowa, Walmart lost the roof. Thank you for letting us know. Jeremy, are we getting hit hard here in Iowa? You're getting hammered in Iowa, okay? Uh, so I want you guys to stay on your toes. It's not going to take that long for this thing to blast through the entirety of the state. This isn't going to be like Friday night where I, you know, like I had to stay up covering this stuff till almost 7 a.m. in the morning. It's not going to be like that. This is going to blast through, and probably as we approach late evening, it'll begin to lose some of its steam, okay? Mm -hmm. So just stay with us here. It's a Wednesday night, and again, these storms are absolutely rocketing. Okay, so right, Kayla, so thanks for being on. I got Mary yeah. Perry on here. Uh, she says these two are making a great team, she says. And uh, you know she's a big fan of weather, and I think she uh, has a respect for meteorologists. So appreciate her very much. Janice Briggs on in the house. 
Uh, that's uh, Jim Perry. Also putting up some prayers for our friends that are in line for these storms over on the Facebook Live. Over on the YouTube Live, thank you for being on. Get about 30 live. Thank you. Uh, I want to say uh, tip of the hat over to John Joseph Colasaco of Kingdom Proprietors. Uh, good to see you on here. Trainer Watch has just been expanded to include Minneapolis, St. Paul, says Nate. Robin Kuman, thank you, Jeremy and Rich, for helping to keep the public informed. And Robin, love you. Thanks for being on. As always, if you guys don't mind to like and share, share this thing broad and wide. You just don't know. You don't know who's going to receive it, right? And who's got people down here in this part of Iowa? Who's got people in Des Moines? Who's got people up here in Storm Lake or in Dayton or in uh, uh, Weber City? Who's got people, you know, eventually later on tonight in Rochester, Minnesota? Who's got people there? Well, you are the pe you don't know, so share. This is potentially life-saving information. Everybody's so quick to share the meme, right? We're also quick to share the funny meme. And it's great to get a laugh, but it, you can't save a life that way. You could potentially save a life this way, so please do that. All right, so Jeremy, I, mm -hmm. uh, what I'd like to do uh, just briefly for a moment before we turn our attention back to the tornadoes north and west of Des Moines, I would like to um, maybe take a little bit of a look uh, on the line, if you don't mind expanding the radar view out for just a moment. I'm going to take a big, uh, and, broad view, and we're going to do that yep. now with WSV3. All right, and if you wouldn't mind a... going off to the south. Uh, so let's head to the south here okay. towards St. Joseph, uh, Missouri. Topeka is in the clear. Okay. Kansas City is about to have the hammer dropped on it. Uh, severe thunderstorm warnings all the way through here. Now, even though there are no tornadoes at this time associated with this line, if you're in the Kansas City area, 60 to 80 mile per hour winds are pretty much almost a given at this point. Take precautions, interior of the home, away from windows. Um, you know, just be prepared to move to a place of safety shortly. This line will blast through and we'll be out of here shortly. Uh, right now, the storm is in the western suburbs of Kansas City from Leavenworth to Overland Park and towards Olath and Ottawa, uh, Kansas, and extending on down towards Leroy. Some very intense echoes actually just to the south and west of Leroy and getting all the way down towards Arkansas City, getting down literally as far south as Ponca City, Oklahoma. Uh, so Joplin, Springfield, uh, Rolla, Columbia, Jefferson City. Unfortunately, some of these areas in the next couple of hours that did get affected Friday night, some of the more northern areas that got affected Friday night. I think like we have in, a developing tornado well, south, uh, Rich. Uh, this is okay. into eastern Kansas, and I'm glad you directed our attention down there. Yes, so yes. Let me go over um, to it. Okay. Um, is this the one that's uh, that identified uh, in the Leroy area, south and west of Ottawa? Uh, let's see where is the location. Should be yeah, it should not be far away from Ottawa at all. And again, because we're all looking at different town names, uh, mm -hmm. but I believe this is the cell. Let, let's show our crowd um, again. This is eastern Kansas. This is my old stomping ground, uh, and it should be close to Ottawa. Oh, it is close to Ottawa. You're right. You're right. Okay. <laughs> Uh, this has got pretty tremendous structure. I want to rock this back a little bit. I'm going to rock it back okay. a little bit because I want to see how this thing's developing. I, I'm I'm confused why they don't already have a tornado warning on it. They have severe on it. I'm confused why it's not already being tour warned. It's got a ridiculous amount of organization. It looks like. Um, but again, I, I'm 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 not looking at the same stuff that National Weather Service is. I mean, I'm looking at level two data. Not sure what else they're looking at. Maybe they have a live guy out there. They probably have chasers out there, and so maybe they're waiting for it to touch down. Now, why would you wait for that? This is a pretty significant looking storm. Is this the one that's just northeast of uh, St. Joseph's, up towards King City, no, Albany? No, no. This is the one that's south of St. Joseph. This is the St. Joseph storm. It's got rotation okay. on it as well. Uh, All right, so this is the one near Leavenworth and Smithville, yes. so literally just north of KC. Just north of KC. So KC's got one troublemaker to the north. It's got one troublemaker to the south. you got another one that they put a severe thunderstorm warning on. Um, and I'm trying to understand. Oh, yes, yes, I see exactly what you're talking about here. Yeah, that, yeah that's, definitely a, that's definitely a problem, northern suburbs of, uh, Let's, of uh, KC there. Well, no, now we're south. Now we're south of KC. Let me put this okay. in motion here. Okay, it spun up, uh, and it's not it's not a classic shape. Uh, I, I think we're getting some. I, I think I understand what their uh, their hesitation is. 
So you got this thing called the forward flank downdraft and the rear flank downdraft. And when they work together, the forward flank downdraft acts like a warm front and the rear flank downdraft acts like a cold front and typically mm -hmm. pivots around the mezzo low like this. But what it's got, it's got a bounder out, out ahead of it. So it, although it's spinning hard up above, it may not be spinning that hard on the ground because we have a boundary. We have a boundary. I think that's what they're doing. Uh, they see the boundary and they realize it's probably not producing yet and it may have a hard time producing. It's, it's a strong signature. It's rotating hard above you. Uh, let me go ahead and take a look at CC. Yeah, there's nothing definitive here. So, uh, anyway, interesting. We will continue to watch this. That's got super cellular ca characteristics. If it can get out ahead of that boundary, um, then there's no telling what that can do because that's also in an area that's got quite a bit of instability. Uh, you're looking at uh, 1,000 to... Yeah. You're looking at uh, 1,500 units of uh, instability or CAPE, convective available potential energy. That's more than you have up in Iowa. So that is a storm that we'll need to continue to, to watch and monitor. Okay, uh, we'll definitely take a look at that, and uh, I'm going to 